We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests off succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. According to his word, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by.
Amen. There's honey in the rock. Amen. Oh, praise you. Oh, Lord, praise you. Oh, let this light. Oh, praise you.
God bless you this evening. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege of being gathered again. All your grace, Lord, your mercy is expressed every time that you bring us back together to worship in spirit and truth. For it's a product, Lord, of your keeping power. It's you keeping your promise in our lives, Lord. It's not our strength, it's not our might, but it's your spirit working in us. God, we're thankful. May we come each time with this fresh expectation, Lord, that we'll receive something from you that we have need of, Lord, that we might grow in this dark hour, that our light might shine brighter in this dark world, Lord, and we might accomplish what you've purposed for us to accomplish. God, I pray that you would take these lips under your control and speak your words of eternal life. God, and I pray that you would have preeminence among us and you'd be the great one among us. This evening we pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, God bless you. While we're standing, let's take our Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 26. Just wanna greet our visitors. I know we've got a brother Joseph Musinga and his family here. God bless you, brother, it's good to have you. This brother is a deacon in Brother Burley Williams Church, so Brother Burley's a good friend of ours. So a friend of our friend is also our friend. Amen. God bless you, brother. I believe he's here visiting Sabasu family, so uh, we want, want to greet them after service. Amen. Also, I want to uh, mention I'm looking forward to the kids' service. As a reminder for everybody that there'll be the kids' service this Sunday at 4 p.m., so we're looking forward to that. And let's look in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Amen. God bless you as you're seated. Amen. If there was ever a time this world needs peace, amen, perfect peace. The world is going crazy. People are losing their peace. They're losing Amen, their, their sense of whatever, they're just losing it. I mean, whatever it is they're losing, you can safely say they're losing it, amen. Whatever it is, we can see the effect of it. But thou will keep him in perfect peace. This is not just peace, this is perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So why is his mind stayed on him? Because he trusteth in him. This is the one, I focused my attention on the one that I trust in, amen? The one that I have confidence in, the one that I know, amen, will see me through, amen? I, I have, uh, I, my mind is stayed on Christ because I know that Christ will see me through. So that will bring perfect peace. I'd like to speak this evening on just a, a simple subject the Lord's been dealing with me on for about a month. Uh, on the channel of the mind. And if we could just take some time this evening and talk about the channel of the mind and ask the Lord to bless us as we, as we, we share what's on our heart. Brother Branham says in, in the message, taking God at his word, the five senses wasn't given to man to contact God with. We know that. Brother Branham says that many times, that our, this, our senses were not meant to contact God. You cannot contact God through your senses. Amen. You can only contact God by faith. He goes on to say, uh, the five senses wasn't given to man to contact God with, however. Five senses was given to man to contact his earthly home. We contact God by faith, the sixth sense. Amen. Amen. So the only way for us to contact God is by faith. Amen. Is that right? Yes. So none of the senses that we have, we have five, amen, in the body and five in the spirit. None of these senses were meant for us to contact God by but I would like to, to just, just pose a thought for you, if you'll just bear with me for a minute as we develop it. We cannot contact God through the senses. We contact God through faith. But God uses those senses to contact us. Amen. So I would like to talk about that through the scriptures. If we can turn to John, the gospel of John chapter 20, and I'd like to <clears throat> just go through a few scriptures as we paint this picture. John chapter 20. So we cannot contact God with the senses, but God will use those senses to contact us. So John 20, verse 26. John chapter 20, verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. 
Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither my hand, thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And we know that blessing applies to us. Amen. But Yet, you know, when Thomas was having an issue with his faith, God was going to come down and encourage his faith because the only way that Thomas, amen, could touch God was by faith, but God was going to come down and touch Thomas, amen, so that Thomas could believe. And he come down and he said, take thy finger and thrust it into my hand. Take thy hand and thrust it in my side. He stood there, amen, as the resurrected Christ and said, see me and touch me and don't be unbelieving, but believe, amen. And Thomas believed. Now let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> We're just going to hit three more places here. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we, we cannot contact God with our senses, but here he's using the sense of hearing to contact us because we have to have faith to touch him, but faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. So I want us to get this straight in our mind that the only way for us to contact God is by our faith. Amen. But God is using these senses to bring us into faith, to bring the word to us for us to believe so that we can contact him. So God is contacting us through the senses so that we can contact him without any of the senses, only by faith. Amen. This is all going to come to a point. First John chapter one. Let's go over to 1 John, over here as we get close to Revelation. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, and we'll read verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, hearing, which we have seen with our eyes, seeing, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So now the Apostle John is telling you, we have seen, we have heard, we have handled of the word of life, and now we are here to declare it to you so that you can hear what we say about what we saw and about what we touched. These are a lot of senses, amen? A lot of human senses involved, but the whole point was for God to get the word down into the soul so that you can believe, because that's the only way that you can touch God. So God is using your senses to contact you so that the only way that you can contact him is by faith. Amen. Now let's go over to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Now, in order to read, you have to be able to see. You have to have a mind. You have had to learn. I mean, reading is not looking. Reading also involves the intellect. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So even a blessing will come to those that read or that hear, amen, the words of this prophecy. And I just, if I could just take a minute to share what my thought is, you know, we, we know that the only way we can contact God, amen, is by faith, amen. We can say a lot of words, we can come to church, we can do a lot of things, light candles, give offerings, but none of those things will bring you in contact with God. Only faith is what will contact God. But God has a way of unlocking the faith that is in us by bringing us the word, and he brings that word through our senses. We have a Bible in print so that we could look at it. We have the sense of sight so that we can read. We have a mind, amen, that we can learn so that we can read, so that when we read the word, amen, we can receive the word, and it can unlock faith in us so that we can touch God. 
Amen. And so God begins to use, amen, these senses in us, amen, so that we can begin to know him and the word can unlock. Even Brother Bannon would use these senses in us to get us to receive the word. Amen. What about the sense of imagination? Amen. What about when Brother Branham goes to tell a story and he begins to see, amen, he said, I can just see Adam and Eve walking out of the garden. He said, and I can just see, amen, as the bloody skins are slapping against their leg as they walk out and the blood is trickling down. Amen, I want to ask you, can you see it in your mind? Yes. What is that? That's your imagination. So what is God using? He's using your mind, using your imagination, amen, using all of these things, amen, <clears throat> even using your affection, even using your memory, amen, because something will happen and God will trigger a memory of a scripture you read or something Brother Branham said and then bring the word to light in your life, amen, so that faith can grow. So we can only contact God by faith, but God is constantly contacting us through our senses. And that's why I wanted to talk about the channel of the mind, because of some things Brother Benham said. And, and because God is always trying to contact us through our senses, I think it's very, uh, very important that we keep the channel of these senses open for God to use. And not allow the devil to plug up these channels Amen, so that we can't receive the word the way God wants us to receive the word. Amen, and all of a sudden things become, amen, we, we just don't hear him like we should hear him because the channels are plugged up with so many other things, amen. Uh, you think about the realm of imagination. My goodness, in, in Noah's day, they had a problem with imagination. Because all the imagination of their heart were wicked or evil continually, amen, and God was going to condemn them because their imagination realm was only evil continually, amen. But we know there was so many times that the imagination realm for many of the prophets of God, amen, were being used as they meditated on God, as David would sit, amen, in his sheep when he was tending his father's sheep and they would all be at rest, amen, in the pasture sitting down, amen. His meditation, his imagination and his thoughts would meditate on God continually and he would begin to write praise songs and worship songs, amen, because the meditation of his mind was on God. But when it comes to Noah's day, their imagination was on evil continually. And we live in a day where the mind of humanity is bombarded with images, bombarded with messages, bombarded with information until the imagination can be so plugged up, amen, with information and images and, and all of these things, amen. I think it's time that we as the bride of Jesus Christ say, I am not going to give all of my senses to the world, but I'm going to reserve them to hear from God. Because that's how God is trying to communicate with me. Amen. Brother Branham said in spoken words, the original seed, he said, but any time a woman takes a wrong step, she has to first receive it in her mind. Some slicker has to persuade her and she listens to it against her own better judgment than the act is committed. See, first it hit Satan, hit Eve's mind. In the womb of her mind, she doubted God's word, then came the actual act. Amen, everything was fine until she began to give her senses, amen, to the voice of the serpent. And the serpent began to use her sense of hearing. He began to use her, her imagination. He began to use, he began to sow a seed in her mind before he could ever sow a seed in her womb. He had to first sow a seed in her mind, amen. Amen. So he said, the only way that we can ever be born again is first the womb of the mind receive the word. Amen. And then the spirit comes on top of that and brings it to life. Amen. There you are. That's what it does. That's the real gospel teaching, brother. I believe if St. Paul was standing today, he teach the same thing I do in this hour. Yes. We believe it. Amen. We're resting on that. Yes. What was the result with her physical and spiritual death? What is the result of those who accept the other way? It goes into this frolic today that they got, both physical and spiritual death. Both body and spirit shall be annihilated, be no more. That's exactly right. Note, Mary's womb, Mary's womb, the physical mind, see, was a virgin womb. 
Why? She believed God's word. No matter how much anybody criticized, how many things somebody else said, that didn't have one thing to do with it. She believed God's word regardless. Oh, I wish I could just get that over. Are you getting it? First was her mind before the act ever took place in her literal womb. Now he's speaking of the Virgin Mary. First, she must receive the word from an angel messenger. When she received the word from the angel messenger, she received it first, and then she conceived in the womb. So God was using the channel. That's why Gabriel comes and appears to her. So now she sees with her eyes an angel. She hears the message with his voice. Why God is trying to get to her to unlock faith that's inside of her to receive the word. So God is using the senses, amen, and he begins, he appears visibly, audibly, gives a message unto her, amen, and she, she doesn't even know how these things can be, but he begins to work, amen, even into, in, into her mind, amen, and begins to tell her that this is going to happen by the Holy Ghost, and something in her unlocks and say, be it unto me according to thy word. So, no angelic visitation, no audible sounds coming from the voice of that angel, amen, then there would have been no faith for, for Mary to receive the promise. Amen. So, he goes on to say, for Mary, it first was her mind before the act ever taken place in her little room. The act had to take place in, in here first to let the Spirit come in to do the rest of the work. Oh my, glory. Before the actual spiritual birth can take place, the Word has to find its, itself through your mind. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath eternal life and shall never come into the judgment or through the tribulation period, but has passed from death unto life. Now, Brother Bram says in the message, the end time sign seed. He says, now what if God would send his message by an angel to Mary and said, Hail Mary, blessed art thou amongst women. You're going to have a baby knowing no man. She said, now wait a minute here. Let me take you down to the laboratory and you tell me, let the doctor prove to me just how I'm going to do this then I'll believe you, it would never happen. But what did, she, what, what did she come to? The womb of her heart, the womb of her spirit. The womb of her spirit is your mind. Your mind is a channel. Amen. So I want you to catch that. Your mind is a channel. And that's what God was using as Gabriel was speaking unto Mary. He was using the channel of her mind, amen, to unlock the faith that was laying down in her because she was predestinated to bring forth that virgin seed, amen, the seed of the woman from before the foundation of the world, amen. But that, that faith had to be unlocked, amen. And we know that it had to do with Mary's faith because when she went to go visit Elizabeth, amen, she gave a salutation her salutation caused that baby to leap in the womb of Elizabeth and Elizabeth began to prophesy and as Elizabeth began to prophesy amen he says she begins to say something on the order of because these things shall be performed in you because you believed because you believe. These things will be performed because you believed amen because everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith amen so the, these things that the angel told you, they're not happening because the angel told you. They're happening because you believe what the angel told you. Amen. Because it requires faith. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. So God is using our senses to bring in us, amen, the quickening power, amen, to, to bring the word. And then when the word's received, the spirit comes on top of the word, which is quickening power to make the word live. And because you believe, it'll be done according to your faith. Praise God. So Mary had to receive and believe the angel's message. Praise God. But he used the channel of her mind, the womb of her mind. Your mind is a channel. Amen. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Verse 17, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Now something in your mind has to change. 
If Paul's Paul saying, don't walk like other Gentiles in the vanity of your mind, you've got to now not allow the vanity of your mind. You've got to do something different with your mind. Having the, and then he goes on to describe them, having the, understand, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversations the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Don't walk as Gentiles in the vanity of your mind, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. What will renew you in the spirit of your mind? The word will renew you in the spirit of your mind. So don't walk like other Gentiles in the vanity of your mind, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind by the word. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Brother Bam says in the greatest battle ever fought, he says, but your mind accepts it, it grasps it. What is your mind controlled by? Your spirit. Your spirit catches the word of God, and that's the thing that's got life in it. Now, Brother Branham, when he begins to explain in greatest battle ever fought, he, he talks about three circles, the inside circle, amen, the outside circle, and then the, out, and then, then the big circle on the outside, and that's body, spirit, soul. But when Brother Branham comes to greatest battle ever fought, he swips, switches the terminology on spirit and soul, and he labels it body, soul, and spirit. But that's no problem at all because he doesn't change his doctrine one little drop. He only changes terminology, but never his doctrine. His doctrine remains the same all the way through. It's just terminology, so don't worry about the terminology. Now here when he speaks in greatest battle ever fought, he already defined the term spirit. He means the innermost part of you, which later he clarifies in 1964, 63, 64, and 65 to be your soul. So you just have to adjust your thinking on the terminology, not the doctrine. Now he's talking about the inside, inside, inside. He said... Your spirit, so he's talking about your soul. So what is, what is your mind controlled by? He says your spirit. So what he's referring to? That third part down on the inside. And your spirit catches the word of God, and that's the thing that's got life in it. What's got life in it? The word and the soul. It brings life into you, oh brother. When that takes place, when life comes down that channel into you, the word of God is manifested in you. So it comes through the channel, it comes through the mind into the soul. And there's a gate to the soul, Brother Bam talks about, and that gate is your free will. You can accept it or you can reject it. It'll come into your mind if you sit through preaching. It'll come into your mind if you listen to a tape. It'll come into your mind if you read your Bible or you read your book. But there's a gate, there's a channel. The channel to the soul is through the mind, but there's a gate in that, cha in that channel, and that gate is your own free choice. You can accept it or you can reject it. If you accept it as it comes into the mind, then it drops into the soul, quickens the seed to life, amen, and begins to express back out through the mind because the mind controls the actions of the body, amen, so it comes into the channel of the mind, it quickens the life, and then it's expressed back through the mind because the mind controls the body and now begins to express the word of God manifested in you. Amen. So there's a channel, amen, between, amen, between the, 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 the spirit and the soul and that channel is your mind. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. So let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. First Peter 1, 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober, that means steady, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
This gird up the loins of your mind. The gird up means to gather up the loose fabric of the robe, amen, of men as they would work. Gird up the loin, gather it up and bind it up around the hips, amen, so it's not loose, it's not getting caught up in stuff. They would, ga- they would gather up the, 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 the loins as they would go to work or as they would run a race, amen. And now he's telling you, don't allow your mind to run loose. Don't be loose in your mind. Don't be like Gentiles in the vanity of your mind. Don't be loose, amen, but gather up the, amen, gather up. Let me read it again. Uh, 113, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Amen, don't allow all this crazy thinking. Amen, gather up the loins of your mind and be sober, be steady, amen, be right thinking. So there's a, there's a commandment here, amen, not to be loose in our mind, not to be vain in our minds and vain in our imaginations, amen, but we're supposed to gather that together, gather the thought life together, gather the mind up and be sober, amen, and be focused and be diligent about how we use the senses, amen, in our body and our mind. And we have to be diligent about what we look at, what we hear, what we allow to come into the wound of the mind, what we, what we, what we imagine about think about. He said, don't let those things run around. Gather them up. Amen. In the greatest battle ever fought, he says, that great first battle that was ever fought began in heaven. When Michael and his angels fought against Lucifer and his angels, it, it first started, the first battle was in heaven. So sin did not originate on earth, it originated in heaven. And then it was thrown down from heaven, cast out of heaven to the earth, and fell on human beings. Then the battle from angels became human battles, and Satan come to destroy God's creation, what God had created to be for himself. He had, he, Satan came to destroy this. That's what his purpose was, was to destroy it. Then the bega- battle began here on earth and began in us. All right, let's catch that. And has been raging ever since. So this great war that broke out in heaven, amen, and I don't think we will ever, I don't think we have even begun to scratch the surface of how terrible that war was in heaven. I mean, we're talking about war in heaven, amen, a division amongst the angels and war that broke out in heaven. I don't think we will ever realize, amen, that maybe, maybe we will someday, maybe after a body change, but we realize what a terrible thing took place in heaven and now cast down to the earth and that same battle rages on, but it rages on in us. It's not going on over here and over there and over there, but that battle has now come to humanity and is raging in us, amen? So we must be diligent, amen? We must gird up the loins of our mind and not walk as Gentiles in the vanity of our mind because the mind is the channel to the soul. It is the womb, amen? It is something that has to be guarded, has to be protected, and has to be focused. He goes on to say in Greatest Battle Ever Fought, He says, when this great battle started on earth, there had to be a mutual meeting place. There had to be a place selected for the battle to begin and for the battle to rage. And that battlegrounds begin in the human mind. There is where the battle starts. The human mind was chosen for the place of the battle, where it was begin. And that is because the decisions are made from the mind, the head. Now, they never started it from some organization. They never started it from some mechanical affair. The grounds never started there. Therefore, the organization can never, never do the work of God because the battlegrounds where you've got to meet your enemy is in the mind. You've got to make your choice. It meets you. So this great battleground where these two forces, Brother Ben begins to describe this in Greatest Battle Ever Fought, where these two opposing armies are testing their strength to see who will be victorious, it's taking place in the minds of man. Amen. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and I'll begin reading at verse 1, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable 
and perfect will of God. Amen. We've got to watch the mind. We talked about last week, I don't remember which service it was, but they asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said the greatest commandment of all was to uh, the, the, the Lord, our, the hero, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So that means God wants all of our heart, Amen. all of our mind, Amen. all of our soul, and all of our strength. Amen. He wants all of us. Remember where the Bible says he's a jealous God? I believe he's still a jealous God. Yes. And he wants us all of our mind. In the greatest battle ever fought, he goes on and says, the battle raged when Eve opened up her mind to listen to her reasoning. That's the fluid come in. That's the channel it run down, her reasoning. She, in her soul, she reasoned. Her eyes was sight. She saw the serpent. He started talking about the senses. Her eyes were sight. She saw the serpent. He was beautiful, handsome, far better than her own husband. He was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field, and he was probably a fairer man than her husband. He looked like a great masculine beast standing there, how great he was, and he was trying to tell her what a great thing it was. And the first thing she did, she opened up her mind, and when she did, human reasonings caught it. Why, wouldn't that be a thrill? That was the thought she had. Wouldn't that be a thrill? He begins... First, it comes into the mind, amen, and he begins to appeal to all of these senses. She, then she turns and looks at the tree and sees that it's, it's pleasant to the eye. It's good for food. It's desirable to make one wise, and he begins to appeal to these senses as he opens the channel of her mind, and she opens her mind to him, to listen to him, to his reasonings, and all of a sudden, the fall, it, it, it brings in the fall, amen. And we know that, that, you know, the devil hasn't changed his tactics, if it ever worked, it'll always work. Like, he realized that religion was the best way to keep people close to God, and the closer he can keep them, the further he can keep them away. It was a tremendous tactic to bring religion on the scene and not to try, amen, to destroy everything God did, but just come and try to pervert what God did. And he found out in the garden he can come close, pervert it, amen, bring the judgments of God upon it, and he can sit as a squatter with squatter's rights and begin to rule over the earth. Amen. So he did the same thing to the Jewish church. He did the same thing to the church in Eden. He did the same thing to the Jewish church. He did the same thing to the Gentile church. And because it worked, he always does the same thing. And the battlefield is in the mind, amen, and, and God begins to, uh, uh, begins to admonish us not to have a loose mind, to be diligent about our mind, to be transformed in the mind, don't go after the vanity of the mind. So the scripture is always giving us this admonition, amen, to guard our mind, amen. And Brother Bram begins to explain it to us in greatest battle ever fought, and I think it behooves us to hear what he says and not forget some of these simple things because it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So many times the things that trip us up, amen, are not the, the, the great big things, the things that are flashing red lights of sin, amen, but the little foxes spoil the vine. The little gaps, the little things left undone, the, the, little, the, the, little, the little areas that we leave a door open, amen, for the devil to creep into and begin to work in our imagination and in our thoughts and in our affections. And next thing you know, amen, we, 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 we have to snap ourselves out of something and say, what is going on with me? And we didn't realize, amen, that I wasn't diligent about gathering up the loins of my mind. And we have to be diligent in this day because there's never been a day, amen, that we know of, amen. Noah's day was like this day, Brother Benham said. I don't know what kind of devices they had and what kind of uh, access they had, amen, but I know what we have in this day. And whatever access they had in their day made the imaginations of their thoughts evil continually. We've come right back to that place in the world. Whatever access they have has brought this world, their minds, evil continually. Remember, God, everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. Faith cometh by hearing the word. So, Brother Branham said, God will have a civilization. But it won't be a civilization of science, and it won't be anything like this civilization of the politics and science and corruption. He'll have a civilization, but that civilization will be based on faith, amen? 
That's what the, the garden was based off. The garden of Eden was based off faith. Amen. The next civilization will be based off faith. That's why this one is based off science, man's thoughts, his reasoning, his achievements. And that one, this, that's why he says this is of the devil. Amen. That next one will be a different kind of civilization altogether. He said, do you think we'll have automobiles and airplanes in that one? No way, amen. We won't need it, amen, because it'll operate by faith. But listen, God wants a people who now operate by faith that are going to live in that civilization. This is our training for reigning in that civilization. So we have to begin to operate by faith. And to operate by faith, we don't operate by science, amen. We have to begin to operate by faith. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. And so in order to operate by faith, you've got to guard your mind. Amen. I was doing, thinking on this imagination and, and all of the, uh, uh, the bombardment that we have almost 24-7 by, all, uh, by, by communications, by internet, by WhatsApp messages and whatever social medias and news and all of these other things. Amen. And, and you know, we all carry a phone. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you right up front, I'm not telling you to throw your phone away. I'm not going to get rid of my phone any more than I'm going to get rid of my car. Because in the world we live in today, amen, everything now needs an access point. Amen. You can't do your banking. You can't. There's so many things that you can't do anymore. And I mean, pretty soon, I don't even know. I mean, I still get out my wallet and I take out money and I've become an odd person. Like, I like to hand people money. And now cashiers, they get a little annoyed with you if you hand them money. It's like, oh, I'm going to have to count back change. They use the credit card. Now they use something on their phone. I don't even know what that is, and I don't ever want to know, but I probably someday will have to know. I'm being reluctantly dragged in to technology. I like paper. I like pens. I like writing down notes. I'm archaic and I'm a dinosaur and I like it that way. But listen, we're not going to have a cell phone in the millennium. But I'm not going to need a notepad either because I'm going to have the right kind of mind. I'll remember something over there. I can actually remember more than two items at a time probably when I get over there. But one thing I realized for me is it's so easy to allow this access point which we need in life. I'm not preaching against it because it, it's necessary. Listen, I'm not gonna preach against Facebook, I'm not gonna preach against uh, WhatsApp, so you can rest easy. I'm not gonna touch on anything like that and say you gotta get rid of this and you gotta get rid of that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you that because this is the world we live in, but what I am gonna tell you is you better gird up the loins of your mind. You better be very aware that the devil has a tactic, amen? And Brother Benham says the Pentecostals used not to let their children go to the picture show, but the devil brought one in and he brought it right in your house. Well, I mean, you just fill in the rest of the sentence. I'm not going to tell you. You know the rest of it. You know, and so this isn't a message of condemnation. This is a message of encouragement because what we need to know is how dangerous this device is, amen, not dangerous because I'm going to get lured into sin, amen. I don't believe, amen, because the God's given us the Holy Ghost that just because I have a cell phone with access in my pocket, amen, I've had it for years, it's not luring me into sin. It's not driving me into evilness and wickedness. But what it's doing is it's polluting my mind, amen. It's filling my head head full of garbage. It is taking the senses that God wants to use to speak to me the Word of God, and it's so full of news and so full of information. And, I mean, it's all the time there's a notification going off, a notification, a, a contact point, a question, a, a testimony, a video from overseas. None of these things are evil. Not one of them are evil. Amen. There's news to watch and there's the weather to check. But I started thinking a little while ago, I said, why do I need to know the weather every hour and a half? <laughs> like I find myself checking the weather. Like it hasn't changed. I'm outside. <laughs> right. 
The other day, my wife told me it was raining. I was back in my office. There's no windows in my office at home. She said, it's raining. I said, no, it's not. The weather said it's not raining. <laughs> my phone says it's not raining. It's not raining. And she just looked at the water running down the windows. She said, it's raining. I said, it's not raining. <laughs> and you realize how subtle this thing is. Not wickedness, not evil, not debauchery but plugging the channel that God wants to use to bring the word. Just filling it up with just stuff. Somebody bought a new car. Somebody's going on vacation. Somebody just bought a new whatever, whatever. I, I mean, not evil, not wicked. Somebody just passed out Bibles in another country. Somebody and wanted to say hello. Somebody said happy birthday, and I got to find out what the weather is because it might have changed an hour ago. And then I better check my email while I'm here checking my weather just in case somebody's trying to get a hold of me. And the next thing I know, flip, 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 30 minutes are gone, and I have received so much information that I did not need in any way, shape, or form, did not change anything, and did zero to build faith inside of me because faith cometh by the Word, not by news, not by weather, amen, not by pictures of somebody's grandchild, amen. None of that will bring faith. Only the Word will bring faith. And I've got to operate by faith, not news. I've got to operate by faith, not, not financial projections. I've got to operate by faith, amen, by faith. And all of these things are filling our minds with information, and it's actually weakening our minds, and it's actually subtly taking away our ability to hear from God all the time. I've been with people before, amen, and, and they, they check their phone like they have nervous tics. It's like, what's changed? And nothing, I don't think they're doing anything evil. I trust, I trust the believers. It's not evil. But God, God is going to, the battle is in the mind. So the devil has found a way to fill the mind so that those, the, the, the God doesn't have as much access. Amen. You know, I was thinking about the process of coming to church. When we come to church, we either silence our phone, turn it off, or leave it somewhere else. And the prophet of God told us, come 30 minutes early to church to get your, your spirit quiet. Amen. So we come to church early, amen, and we begin to pray and we begin to meditate. And on the way to church, we're thinking about church. We're wondering about, you know, what, what will the sermon be like today? And we're thinking about church, and maybe your thoughts are on the what was preached last time. Will it be a continuation? Will it be something else? And so we're coming. As we come to church, we're starting to align our senses. Our memory of last service, our thoughts, our imagination of what might be preached. Then we come into the service and we quiet ourselves down and we begin to focus on what's about to happen. We begin to pray, begin to meditate, read our Bibles, read the message, amen. And then all of a sudden the musicians come out and they begin to create an atmosphere which you hear in your ears. And all the senses, what, what church is doing is aligning all of our senses to one focal point. Our feeling, our hearing, I mean everything, our thought life, everything begins to align. Amen. then after the song leader comes out, we all begin to sing. We begin to sing the same songs, and the songs are about the Word, and the songs are about the Lord, and the songs are about our position with Him. And what's it doing? It's bringing the imagination. It's bringing the thoughts. It's bringing the affections. Everything begins to line up. And then we come to the preaching of the word, amen, then God begins to speak through the preaching of the word, amen, and, and we receive something. He begins to talk to us, repeat our sentences back to us, answer the questions that we came with, and God begins to speak to us, amen. And then afterwards, amen, we, we have time of worship and a time of prayer, and we begin to thank God for what he's done and meditate on what we've heard and let it soak in. And we walk out of here and we say, God was speaking directly to me in that service. And, and I'm here to tell you that's a wonderful thing. Thing, but I don't think this is the only place that God wants to speak to his children. 
I believe if we can do the same thing elsewhere, we can receive the same thing from God. I believe God wants to speak through the channel of the mind. I believe God wants to tell us, amen, what his plan is, what he wants us to do. I believe God wants fellowship with you and I. But how many times, amen, do you go to read your Bible, amen, you go to, to prayer, and all of a sudden, notification. And somebody's sick. Notification. Somebody's engaged. Notification. Somebody's traveling. I, and then all of a sudden, you're trying to pray, but actually what you're doing is saying, God, uh, I love you, help me with my day. And in your imagination, you're rolling through all of those notifications. I mean, I hope I'm not the only person that this happens to. And all of a sudden, and so there's words, but there's no connection. There's words, but there's no prayer. Amen? God's not after words. You can only contact him by faith. So, for me, this is just me personally. I'm not telling anybody else what to do. This is just me. This is what I've found. When I wake up in the morning, I leave my phone back by my bedside because it's my alarm clock, and I go to prayer and I go to read my Bible without my phone. Because too many times it goes off, goes off, goes off. And even if I don't check it, I'm already wondering what it is. Could it be this and could it be that? And nothing evil. There's nothing evil going on. Nothing wicked, nothing ungodly, nothing contrary to the, to the Word of God. But my mind is already distracted at the time when it should be focused. And for me, this is just me. Like I say, I'm not giving any commandments, but I like a Bible. And I'll tell you why. A lot of people use their phone or whatever to read the Bible, and that's fine. There's a daily devotion my wife and I do. I do on the phone. Amen? But for me personally, I like a Bible. Because when I pick up this Bible, there's only one function for this Bible. It does nothing else. This Bible doesn't tell me the weather. It doesn't tell me who's getting married. It doesn't tell me who's having a good day and who's on vacation. And all this Bible does is give me the word which will give me faith. And when I pick this up, I'm singularly focused on the Word of God, and there are no interruptions, no notifications. You say, well, I don't check them. You don't have to check them. Bink, bink, bink. And then the name pops up at the top, and you know, oh, man, I'll, I'll answer her later. And you go back to reading. What are you reading? What impact is it having? You're thinking about who you've got to remember to call back later, right? So for me, I like a message book. Because there's only one purpose for that book. I'm going to read the message. I mean, you can still use whatever device you want. I'm not against it. I mean, I read the message on my, my phone all the time, amen? I read the Bible on my phone. I've got an app that I use for the concordance on my Bible all the time when I'm talking to you. I will always use it. I'm not against that. But I'm telling you, I've had to take steps myself to gird up the loins of my mind. Because I realize leaving this mind loose is not working to build any more faith in me. It's the distractions polluting the channel of the mind that God wants to use to get to my soul to unlock the faith that's laying there. So this isn't about, this isn't about everybody line up and you all throw this away and you all get that. No, absolutely not, friends. I'm telling you what I've had to do myself, amen, to gird up the loins of my mind. Because the other was not working. I mean, it worked partially. I mean, I still read the Bible and I did devotions. But now I need quiet, undistracted, intentional, focused time to put my mind to the purpose of hearing God's word. Man, man I'll, I'll just ask you because I've been through all of this lately. When was the last time you just meditated on the Lord? For 20, 30 minutes. No other noise, no music playing, nothing audio, all by yourself. When was the last time, and not a list of prayer requests, when was the last time you just let your thoughts focus on God and meditate on Him for a period of time? 
I mean, sometimes we get in our car and we have to have noise all the time. Stimulation, stimulation, stimulation. Because we live in a world where we've been overly stimulated. All of the senses have been stimulated nonstop. Visually stimulated, audio stimulated, stimulation, stimulation, stimulation. So that when everything goes quiet, we feel a little bit weird, awkward. I don't think God wants it to be awkward when we get quiet. I don't think... I, I, I think God is a gentleman. He never screams and shouts for attention. He's patient and he's a gentleman. Amen. And he has to be invited. Even when Jesus was speaking to them on the road to Emmaus, he was going to walk by until he was invited in. And for me, I've had to, I've had to gird up the loins of my mind Amen. and say, I'm not throwing away my smartphone. There's a lot of it I need to function, a lot of work I need to do. I'm not throwing it away. I'm not suggesting you throw it away. But what I am saying is we better be careful. We better pay attention. We better wake up and realize that the battle is in the mind. And the word is coming through the mind, through the soul, amen, and the, and the devil's message is coming in the mind, and he's trying to block the channel to the soul, amen, and doesn't want that word to be expressed in you and I, and there's a battle raging in our mind, and we better pick which side we're going to be on. Amen. And say, you know what, I'm not going to take this distraction, I'm not any longer going to waste this time, I, I'm no longer... I, I, let's read a scripture, 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. This will embody what I'm, hopefully will embody what I'm trying to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to read verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. That means profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Let's make this our cry. I'm not doing evil. I'm not doing wrong. I'm not committing sin. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient for me. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I will not let this thing plug up the channel that God wants to use to speak his word to me. I will not give my mind to such as that 24 hours a day. I will not give all my waking time and my attentiveness to that, amen, so that it can plug up my mind and begin to reduce my ability to hear from God and receive the word. I will not be brought under the power of that, although it's not sin, it's not wrong, I don't have to get rid of it, but I will not be brought under the power of that. This is overcoming time. This is an overcoming people. In the midst of Satan's Eden, when Satan's Eden's come to its pinnacle, to its peak, and everything is available, everything that you ever want, amen, anything that you can imagine, amen, it can be available to you, amen, but you won't be brought under the power of any because there's been a bride that's been awakened to the word in this day, and she will overcome every one of Satan's tricks and tactics. She will prevail. She will, amen, by free choice, give God the best time, give God her mind, not by force not because somebody beat him over the head with the word and made him so guilty that they wanted to do this and that, amen, but just somebody said, hey, watch your mind. Watch what God wants to do. God wants to speak to you, and there's a little bride so in love with him that says, if he wants to speak to me, then I want to be quiet and hear what he has to say. I want to be focused. I want to be dedicated. I want to be diligent, because if he wants to speak to me, I want to hear what he's saying. There's not about guilt. This is not condemnation. Amen. This is not, this affects every single one of us. But we have to be aware it affects us. And we've got to be willing to take action. Amen. I found out that I don't need my phone with me all the time. What a novel idea. I mean, uh, you know, the boys have dumb phones, these little dumb flip phones. It's it's the, it's the bane of their existence. It's an embarrassment in this world today to pull out an old phone and flip it open. It's like the badge of shame. But they don't need anything else. I want to be able to communicate with them. I want to know where they're at. That's all they need. Then one of the girls says, 
you know, you really should get maybe a smartphone to think about, you know, routing directions so they'd know how to drive because it'd be safer that way. I said, listen, I didn't have a mapping feature when I got my license. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a pager. And I survived. We made it through. When I was a boy, we didn't even have seatbelts in our car. Like, well, you got to have this, and you got to have that, and you got to have this. And all of a sudden, you're like, who's this dictating what I have to have and what I don't have to have? Now, of course, I, I wanted to be safe, so we bought one of those little Garmin things that you stick on the window that you can't do anything else but see directions. So there, we're perfectly safe. But you understand the world, everything's shifting this way. And I like my mapping feature. I enjoy it. I got tired of getting out of the car and asking directions. <laughs> Going into the gas station, do you know where such and such a street is? I like my mapping feature. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to keep using it. But I'm not going to be brought under the power of this thing. I, <clears throat> I realized, you know, when COVID broke out and all that thing was going on, Amen. I was watching news, and there was a certain necessity to watching news because things were changing, and as a church, we needed to know what requirements were and what laws were changing, and there was a certain requirement, but I realized that during that process, I got in the habit of watching news, and my mind was filled, and I always wanted to make sure something hadn't changed, so I would watch 20 minutes to realize nothing changed, and then at the end of the day, I'd watch 20, 30 minutes to realize nothing changed. And then the next day, I'd watch 30 minutes to realize nothing changed. Hey, guess what? Nothing's changing. And so I realized what was happening. I said, no more. I don't need that anymore. And I quit. And then when the war in Ukraine broke out, all of a sudden, we want to know what's going on. Fulfilled prophecy, what Brother Ben said about Russia. Could this be it? Could this be that? And so we're interested. We're curious because of the word. So we begin to watch the news. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, some drastic things are changing. Believers are fleeing. It's affecting some of the people that we know. And there's news. But then it gets into, the, then very quickly, it moves into the repetition of the same thing every day. I mean, the name of the city's different and who did what is slightly changed. But it becomes a thief that steals my mind. And I recognized what was happening. I said, I don't need that anymore. And it wasn't like I was watching all day. I might have watched 30 minutes a day. But, but then you think about it after that. And then the things that are said and the images that are there, they have an effect on you. Things that you see and things that you hear, they affect you, and they don't leave you immediately when you shut the phone. You shut it off and you put it down. You got the news you needed, but what you heard and what you saw remain rolling around in there for quite a period of time. And sometimes it can even pop up weeks later or years later. And, and I'm telling you, I am older now. I'm not old, but I'm older now, and I have limited capacity to store information. And I cannot waste what precious resources I have upstairs <laughs> on things that make zero difference for me in my daily life. I will still, amen, I will still get up in the morning, go through the same exact routine, come into the office, read the message, amen. All the news that has happened, has it changed anything in your life in the last six months? Nothing's changed. All that I was doing was hearing about what's happening somewhere else in other cities and other names, and I was still had to go through the same routine, only I was going through the same routine, more distracted. I say, we can't live this way. We've got to be focused, friends. We, we, the devil is constantly after the bride, trying to trip her up, and God is constantly trying to lead us. We don't have time for this. The, what we're called to is, is, is too important, amen? We're, what God wants to do in us, amen, is so critical in this hour that we have to be tuned in, amen? The dial's got to be tuned in to the right frequency, and it's got to stay there, amen? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6.
and verse 22. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. The, I looked up eye, this word eye in the Greek, and in the concordance when it gives the description of eye, it says the eye metaphorically, the eyes of the mind, the faculty of knowing. Now let's go back and read it with the concordance description. Metaphorically, the eye of the mind, the faculty of knowing. If the, the light of the body is the eye or the mind. If therefore thine eye be single, that means focused on one thing. If it be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Or what light are we talking about? We're not talking about sunlight, friends. We're talking about illumination, the word of God. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? I, I don't want any more darkness coming in. I mean, you can't, you drive down the road, messages, billboards, messages, information. You walk through stores, there's information everywhere. It's on racks, it's coming from other people. I mean, it's, it's, you're inundated with information. You go to work and you, you work with geniuses who knows what's going on in the world. They know everything and they're willing to tell you all about it. They know what's problem with the government. They know what the solution will be. They, 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 know, they know everything. They know what COVID's really about. Right? That's why they're working next to you is because they're so smart they got it all figured. They're undercover. They're really, they could run the whole world, but they're just working next to you just so nobody else knows. People crack me up. The world is funny. But you're inundated with information. And it's all from a civilization of unbelief. All of it is unbelief. The messages at work, what you run into in the store, what's on the magazine racks, what's coming through the news, amen. It's all unbelief. From a civilization is unbelief, and it is none of it taking us to the civilization of faith. None of it is preparing us, amen. These are things we have to overcome. We have to avoid at all costs, amen. And I'm stuck right in the middle of Satan's Eden, but God knew I would be here, amen. And God knew my senses would be battled all day and bombarded all day with lies and unbelief and lies and unbelief. So what did God do in this day when our senses of sight and senses of hearing were gonna be inundated with unbelief? God, amen, brought a prophet up in a day when he would have an audio recording. We'd have books printed. We'd have videos of him, deep call to the demon, 20th century prophet. So as Satan's inundating the senses, God has provided something for the senses, amen. You can read the book. You can listen to the tape. You can watch the video. You can be singly focused. God has provided what we need to overcome this lying, deceptive civilization. God is so good. He hasn't left us lacking anything, friends. There has never been this much recorded information from a prophet's ministry everywhere in the history of the world and no, no other ages. How much do you have about Jeremiah? How much do you know about Isaiah? Amen. Even Paul's writings is very limited. But here we have the majority of a lifetime of a prophet of God on earth, and we watched his life, we watched his character, we heard him preach in multitudes of situations and explain numerous doctrines, amen, and we can all receive it in our senses, the same sense as the devil is trying to use to plug our mind. If we'll, if we'll move that junk away from our mind and be singly focused, amen, if our mind will be single on this message, amen, we will get everything we need to overcome. I don't need information, amen, from the news to overcome Laodicea. I need this message to overcome Laodicea. The news is not helping me overcome. It's not giving me that tip that insider bit of information. No, everything I need is coming from this message. Everything that I need to fulfill God's purpose in my life, to accomplish what he's called me for, 
and to receive a body change and to move into the, the, the millennium. Everything that I need is in the message. Nothing outside of that will produce faith in me. So what do we want to spend the most time with? I'll ask you another question, and I'm not just asking to you, I've asked them to myself. When was the last time you just drove down the road by yourself in a car with no noise? No radio, no music, no nothing. And just talk to God. Not even pray like a traditional prayer, but just said, God, I love you. God, I love you. And I'm so thankful for you. See, I think that should be our life. That should be our daily life. That should be how the bride lives, amen. But the devil's trick is to keep the noise going. Keep the noise, keep the information, keep the flashing lights, keep, the, keep it, all of it, amen. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going until we're so strung out on that stuff, as soon as it goes quiet, we're looking for a button to push somewhere. Uh, you know what? I don't want any more buttons. I, I started in the evening time now. I, I've had several times in the evening time where I just go and I take my phone and I lay it on the dresser be, or my, my nightstand because it's my alarm clock. In the last couple hours of the day, I have no phone. And the world has not quit spinning. There has been no emergency that needed my immediate attention where folks would have died or I realized, you know what else I started doing? When I'm going out running errands and I'm gonna run into the bank and I'm gonna run into the store and pick something up, I realized that I can leave my phone in my truck. You know what happened when I left my phone in my truck? Whenever I would go into the store and you go to the bank and all of a sudden you didn't expect it but now there's a line. And the person in front of you runs some sort of business because they want 5,000 ones and 100 tens and and you're standing here, and the first thing you do is stick your hand in your pocket and you pull it out and make sure nobody texts you and nobody emailed you. And we're trying to get something done while we're standing in line. And all we're doing is putting more stuff in the mind. That doesn't need to be there. Hey, listen, we don't need to be more efficient. We don't need to multitask. If your mind be single, that's not multitasking. If your mind be focused, your whole body shall be full of life. There's times we have to multitask. We have to work. We have to get things done. But I think there should be times that we're not multitasking. I think there should be times that we let our mind go quiet and let the noise, shut the noise down and just focus our attention on God and his word. It's the only thing that will overcome Satan's evil. Yeah. Nothing else is going to work. And we always think, this is me, I always think, this is a busy day, tomorrow will be different. It's a busy day, tomorrow will be different. It's a busy day, tomorrow will be different. How many times have you had a busy day but you knew tomorrow will be different? I'll have a little more time tomorrow. I'll be a little more quiet. It never happens. And I'm tired of deferring my time with the Lord to another day. When I'm less busy, why should God wait for me to get less busy? He's the creator of heaven and earth. Why does he need to wait for me to get less busy? Like, God, I don't have time for you right now because I've got weeds growing in the yard. All of a sudden, we just need to wake up. It's, it's, it's the dream world. It's the fantasy world of electronic and entertainment, and the, the devil's trying to get us drawn into that and trapped into that, but there's got to be a people who says, I will not be brought under the power of any. It's lawful for me. It's not sin. All things are lawful for me, but this is not expedient, and I will not be brought under the power of this thing because I was not put on this earth to live like everybody else lives. I am not here to just get along in Laodicea. I'm not here to multitask and get a bunch of stuff done, amen, just so I can pay more taxes to the government. I am here to serve the purpose that he had of me before the foundation of the world. And I'll never catch that purpose without this message. And I'll never fulfill it without quieting down and getting direction from God and hearing from him. I say, God, help us. 
Abraham had a visitation when he was separated from Sodom. David wrote hymns when he was separated with the flock. Moses received the visitation of the pillar of fire and word from the Lord when he separated. Amen. Paul, the apostle Paul, amen, he received the revelation of Jesus Christ when he went to Arabia. None of these times were mentally busy times. None of these times were full of mental stimulation. They were times where they were drawn aside. Amen, and Brother Branham made the statement. He said, Jesus was always fasting and praying. And if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had to constantly fast and pray, what about you and I? And I said, God, help me, Lord. I need your help, God. I, I want to be more diligent. I want to be free. I do not want to be brought under the power of these things. But God, I'm going to need supernatural help from you. Amen. Because there's habits in my life. There's things that I'm not even aware of. But God, if you'll help me, God will do everything in my power to dedicate myself to you. To dedicate my mind, to dedicate my time, my attention, the things I feed on, the things I look at. I want to bring them back center to you, almighty God. I want to shut everything off and pick up an old paper Bible. When the only thing that I can do with this Bible is read God's word. I want to go to a place and pray where I cannot hear the vibration of a phone to distract my attention. I don't want it in my pocket. I don't want it on the table next to me. I do not want to hear a notification tone because I want to hear a notification from him. I want to catch that something's coming today. I want to catch that little nudge that tells me I need to be quiet. I, I do not want to be brought under the power of any of these things. God has chosen the channel of the mind, and I want to give him my mind. I want to focus my mind on him. I just want to read a couple more scriptures together. Let's turn to the Psalms, and we'll, we'll wrap up with a couple of scriptures. Psalms chapter 19. Psalms 19 and 14. Before that, I read that, I want to read this quote from Greatest Battle Ever Fought. He says, how does he get in? He's talking about Satan. How does he get in through this mind, this door, the battlefront standing there? How does he get in? Through the mind. That's the door he comes in. Psalms 19, 14. It says, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth, you know God has hearing too? He can hear what we talk about. He can hear what we're most enthused about in the whole world. What we talk to everybody about, the most exciting thing that's ever happened to us, he hears what that is. And is it him or is it something else that he's hearing all the time? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and verse 97. Psalms 119. 97. Oh, how I love thy law. In the Old Testament, whenever they said the word or the Bible, they said the law. So, oh, how I love thy word. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Amen. Let it be my meditation all the day, too. Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for, they test, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Friends, this is available to you and I. 
because we have the full revelation of the full Word of God, and we know more than our teachers. We know more than anybody else around us. We know more than our enemies. Amen. We don't have to know how to operate everything in this world and what's going on, and, how, and we don't need to know all the catchphrases. I think it's wonderful. Amen. Uh, Blake was telling me one day he's at work, and somebody made some statement, and they're referring to some something that's trending on TikTok that's gone viral that everybody knows about, and somebody said it's like such and such and such. And Blake just looks at him. And the guy goes, you've never heard that, have you? He goes, no. (laughs) Praise God, I don't want to know what they're talking about. I don't want to know. I want him to look at me and say, you don't know about this? No, I don't know about that. Is it in the Bible? If it's in the Bible, I might know about it. I don't want to know what's trending. I don't want to know what's viral. I don't want to know what the hottest this, that, and the other. I don't even want to know what the best game is, and I don't even want to know what, the, what has the most views. I don't, I don't want to know what the greatest toy is going to be this next Christmas season. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Amen. What is it that keeps putting this in my mind? I don't want to know. I want to know thy precepts. I want to know thy law. I want to know thy plan for me. I want to know what you want me to do, oh God. Help me, God, to break away from this Satan's Eden and focus my mind to be singularly focused, amen, so that my body can be full of this illumination of the Word, so that I can manifest it in every conversation, manifest it in my life. Praise be to God. Brother Bam says in the Forgotten Beatitude, but I said this, that God can use what you yield. Like Samson would not yield his heart to God, he give that to Delilah. But he gave his strength to God, and God could only use his strength. That's all. So God will use what you yield. But if, I fought, but if a fellow could only yield his complete being to God, now that's it. If you can yield your body, God will use your body. If you can yield your mind, your heart, whatever it is, God will use what you give to him to use with. He's seeking to find somebody that he can find yielded like that. I say, if we can give him our mind, he'll use our mind. He'll reveal his word to us. He'll quicken our understanding. He will lead us and direct us if we will give him our mind, give him our time, give him our focus. Let's look at Philippians 4 and 8. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever, whatsoever things are true, tell me what's true on your phone other than the message app and the Bible app. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Everything they listed describes the word of God, the message of the hour. Think on these things. Let's bend our mind to the thing that matters most. Let's look at Malachi chapter three. This is the last scripture I'd like to read together. Musicians, you can come on up if you'd like to make your way. And Brother Ben, Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Malachi three sixteen. This scripture is one that Brother Gene Petrie has quoted to me over and over and over again. I think it's one of his favorite scriptures. Malachi three sixteen. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. What is that? Fellowship. And what are they talking about? What do they have in common? They fear the Lord. Let's read that again. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. We should be talking to each other about the word. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. (laughs) When you're fellowshipping about the word, God hears it. And listen, 
And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Do you want to be in that book of remembrance? I want to be in that book of remembrance. There was a book of remembrance, amen, was written before him for them that feared the Lord and and that thought upon his name. What do we think about? We think about the Lord. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. I say, praise God, I want to be in that book of remembrance. I, who fear the Lord, want to speak often one to another with somebody else that fears the Lord, and God will hear it and put it in a book of remembrance, those who thought upon his name. I'm so excited that we know where his name is. We know what his name is. We've been given the word that declares his name, and we can think on those things. I'm so thankful for tapes. I'm so thankful for books. I'm so thankful for fellowship. I'm so thankful for services twice a week. I'm so thankful for those things. Those are the things that should be, we should give the most diligent time and attention to because those are the things that will equip us for the civilization of faith. Listen, I don't need to know how to make it in this world. Because if anything comes that I can't handle, I have a father. If anything happens that that I I can't find my way, I have a father. I don't need to be the most educated person in the world. I don't need to be the most informed person in the world about carnal earthly things. But if I can be singularly focused on him, he promised he will provide everything I need. He promised that he would take care of me. He promised he would lead and guide me and that he would order my steps. Amen. I don't need to be informed. I don't need to have all the information. I've got all the information I need in the word of God and I need to focus on it and let him pick my foot up and put it down. Let him part the waters. Let him move whatever and provide whatever. I got to stop trying to be so smart and so informed. And so I just need to give my attention to this word and let the word make a way. I'm telling you, it's hard. It's hard for me. It's hard for all of us. Amen. We're inundated with this, but I will not be brought under the power of these things anymore. And I tell you, one thing I found, when I took my phone and I left my phone all by itself back on the dresser, you poor little phone, I was in charge. And it felt good. I wasn't attached to that thing. It wasn't stuck on the hip. I wasn't worried about it every second of the day. When I laid the thing down and walked away from it, I mean, I know it's just a goofy little bunch of plastic and metal, but when I laid that thing down and walked away from it, it was like I was saying, ha, 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 you can't control me. There's something liberating about taking control. We weren't put here to be in subjection. We were put here to bring everything into subjection. I'm not going to be brought under the power of any of these things. Though they be lawful, I will not be brought under the power because all things that are lawful are not expedient. And I want that which is expedient in my life. And I want that which will take me out of this life into the next one. Spend so much time trying to figure out how to live better in this life. I don't want to live better in this life. I want to get out of this life. I want to move to the next one. So I want to look at the information that's going to take me there and say, God help me. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. I pray to God that you receive this in the spirit it was sent in, the spirit it was preached in. Amen. This is where God's been dealing with me. This is where I've been learning. These are things that I've had to take control of. These are things I have to be more diligent about. But I don't think I'm the only one. I think the world we live in requires that we gird up the loins of our mind and be sober. Man, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father. I'm so thankful for your word, Lord. I'm so thankful for this message where your prophet, Lord, will will illuminate that word and show us the day we live in and where the battle is and what we have to do to overcome. God, I just want to tell you, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not being diligent. I'm sorry for not being singularly focused. I'm sorry, Lord, for being a little loose in my mind. 
But God, I'm asking that you would forgive me and give me the power and the strength, Lord, to, to come back in line to this word, to give you my best time, to give you my thoughts, to give you my energies, to give my best to you, Lord. Help me, God. I'm more determined than ever not to be brought under the power of these things. I pray you help me and help these people, Lord. Help us as your children, Lord, that, that we would, Lord, not give our mind away to the devil and all his tools, but we would give our mind to you, that we would focus on you. And Lord, I pray that you would come through that channel and quicken us, Lord. Bring the word to life inside of us. Build us in faith that, Lord, everything can be overcome by faith, that every obstacle can be mounted by faith, and every circumstance, Lord, can be overcome by faith. Help us, Lord, to feed on this word and not give our senses to the devil, but let's take all the senses, Lord. Help me take all the senses that you give to me and focus them towards you so that I can receive from you. God, bless us as we go from here. Help us, Lord, to climb higher than we are now. We're not satisfied where we are, Lord. There's got to be a higher walk. There's got to be a closer walk. There's got to be a greater faith. There's got to be more than what we have now. Lord, help us to focus so that we can go to where you want us to be, so that we can grow into all that you want us to become. Help us, Lord, to channel our attention into this word, that this word might build faith and that faith might grow in us. We love you and we ask that you would take us from here and keep us, Lord. Equip us for this journey. Help us, we pray, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, Brother Ben. Oh, keep your mind stayed on me. Stayed on me. Faith
Just sing it like this. Oh, I will keep my mind on you, Lord. I will keep my mind on you, Lord. I Is where.